is a natural disaster. What do we do? What can we do? How can we make this possibly? And, and there's nothing we can do. We're just throwing things out there, hoping it'll go away. And that's basically a prayer, if you think about it. 
We're just hoping it will go away and buy us some time that we will be able to make. I'd like to go through today, and it's Old Testament and the first half of your Bibles, Second Chronicles chapter 20. When a king of Judah faces a crisis, and this crisis is this bad. After Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Midianites came against all these people, came to wage war against the Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea, but it's already here in, in Gedi. And it says, alarm. Jehoshaphat resolved, inquired the Lord, and replaced a fast of Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help and from the Lord, indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. I want to explain the crisis. There are three armies coming against Judah. They are already, Jehoshaphat, they are already here, and each one of the armies is larger than the total army of Jehoshaphat. Notice what it says, how he handles the panic. He's alarmed. He's alarmed. That means he's scared. That means he's afraid. Now, here is something that we need to be careful with. Even though being alarmed, he takes an action that transforms this crisis into something God can handle. First of all, he resolved. I am resolved. To inquire the Lord. I am resolved to look to the Lord. Most of the people, what we need to be careful with is what happens is one, fear sets in. Number two, when fear sets in, worry starts setting in. And notice worry is always self. Fear, worry always looks towards self. And the third thing that happens is sort of like free relative and like cousins see each other. Fear, worry, panic. Fear, worry, panic. Alarm. And I want us to be alarmed. Don't take this like, oh, we'll get through this and everything's going to be great and fine. That is not promised anywhere. That is not promised anywhere. A natural disaster and, and like this virus is something we cannot handle. We have no control over at all. We discovered that real quick. So Jehoshaphat, the same way, he has no control of those three armies. He cannot increase his army. Whereas now, what does he do? He says, one, I resolve not to go into worry, not to go into panic. I resolve to do what? To inquire of the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast to all Judah. Then the people of Judah came together. Everyone came together. And I want you to keep this in mind because this is the important thing one of the things sometimes we want to do is shelter people, loved ones, from a crisis. The host of that says, no, everybody's in on this. Everyone's in on this. People of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Now, praying in crisis that we're talking about today, is to see where Jehoshaphat is coming from and how he leads his people through it. We back up a couple of chapters in chapter 17. It says, The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he followed the ways of his father David before him. He did not consult the Baals, but sought the God of his father and followed his commands rather than the principles, the practices of Israel. His heart was devoted to the ways of the Lord. So here's a key thing. Alarm. How is it that he resolved the first thing he's going to do is seek the Lord because it's a natural habit of his. He does it every day. When you see the great people, Daniel, three times a day in prayer, even when they said, don't pray, that God said he did it anyways because what? Crisis. When you look at Nehemiah, what is it? Prayer, walking around the wall. When you look at Jesus, what did he do? Oftentimes, he went away by himself in solitude. So that when in the garden, when Peter, James, and John go a little bit farther with him, 
Jesus goes farther and prays. He comes back and says, can you not pray for one hour? Because this is a resistance to temptation. Jesus sought God. Daniel sought God. Abraham sought God. What did Job do? Every day he went to worship and sacrifice for his kids that they did not sin the night before he was before the Lord. Here's what Joseph did. He prayed to God and sought God. So when panic sets in, the plan of prayer comes to the top. I want to talk about praying in crisis. Look at what your host said. You did. And, you know, Therefore, everyone hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. It's like a white man who built his house on the rock. You know this song? I'm not going to sing it. Rain came down and the streams rose up and the winds blew and beat against the house. What is that? That's a crisis. That's a storm of life. That's what Jesus said. Everyone who is in my word, who is prepared by saying the word of God, Jesus says, This is how you handle a crisis. He says, Seek the word of God because it had a foundation on the rock. And the rock is not just Jesus Christ. The rock is the words, Jesus says. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. I want to take the word prayer. I just want to take some, put some words with it just, just to sit down and real quick and let you use this as an outline for when you pray. It's your host that's outline. First word that comes with peace is praise. It's praise. Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people of Israel and give forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They live in it. I'm going to ask you a question. Where's the problem? Where's the crisis? He hasn't mentioned it yet. What's he mentioning? What God has done, what God's power is, what God has promised. They have lived in it and have built a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or the plague of, or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name, and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. You see how positive this prayer is? This is praise and power. Most of the Old Testament prayers, they start off with Thanksgiving. Here's what you've done, here's what you've done, here's what you've done. You brought us in. Brought us out of Egypt. You divided the Red Sea. You know, go back to the garden. You're the creator of everything. There's something that we can add to that prayer. Someone to add to that prayer. Jesus Christ, the cross, and the resurrection. And then the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Think about that power. We add to that prayer. Now they praying, giving praise, You're giving thanksgiving. What does Thanksgiving do? Thanksgiving reminds us of what God has done. And when we remember in praise and thanksgiving as worship, when we remember what God has done, we know what God is going to do in the future. You see this last line, he says, and we will cry out to you in our own distress, and you will hear us, and you will save us. You will do it. Many times in our prayer, we go to panic, we go right to the problem. Lord, help us, help us, help us, help us. But then it comes, and finally we get the request. But now, here are men in these three armies, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade, when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do. That's the basis of our prayer. It's the basis of praying in Christ. We do not know what to do. We're not in control of this situation. God, help us. We know you're going to save us, but we humbly make this request. 
we do not know what to do. All the men of Judah have been wise. Now notice this group of and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. There's a parenting thing. What is the parenting thing? The parenting thing is do not hide, especially fathers and mothers, do not hide your need for prayer from your children. Let them see that in a crisis, the first place you go is bring your request before God. And they need to know what's going on. As long as we hide it, they're not taking God seriously. As long as we put it off to the side, they're not taking God and seeing where God is. Bring the children in crisis. You have a financial crisis. You're having an illness crisis. Bring the whole family in and have them all pray. Have them all pray. Don't protect them from prayer. Because then they don't see that we trust in God. There's nothing more humbling for a man, a father, or a mother that gets on their knees in front of their children and say, I am not control of this life. I need God. The most of that said, everyone God. All the men, all the women, all the children, all the little ones. Paul put it this way, he says, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming errors of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit of all, on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. And then he continues in, rejoice in the Lord always. I say rejoice. And when, when he says rejoice, he says this, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Bring your request. What are you worried about? What are you anxious about? What are the things that are concerning you during this time of the virus? This week, you're going to find out the patient keeps coming. You're going to find out whether that people are unemployment. You're going, what we won't know is when it's the end, what's going to happen. It's not under control, but what we can do is bring our request to the Lord. We want this to go by. We want this to be something that passes. We want this to be cured. We want this to disappear. We bring those before the Lord, and we hand them to the Lord, and humbly give them to the Lord, and we don't keep them to ourselves. See, that's what worry does. And so we have praise, we have requests, and then for A, I want to think of the word answer. Have you ever had someone come to you and ask you what you should do, and the things that you should be doing, and you start to give them an the answer and they run away? They just walk away, they start going away, and you go, hey, hold on a second, don't you want to know the answer to your question? Don't you want to see that answer? to your life and see the answer to your question and they just run off. How many times in prayer, how many times in prayer, you pray the problem, not the praise, to get right to the request. And it's not a request, they're more like, I'm presuming you have to cancel it. You have to do it now. And you say, Jesus, name, amen, and run off. And God's going, don't you want to hear the answer? Don't you want to hear the answer? And so in prayer, it's not just praise. It's just not request. What you requested, you requested God to do something. Now, hear the answer. Spend as much time requesting and listening for an answer. In other words, how do I listen to the answer Jesus told us? He says, when you request something, go to the word for the answer. Listen to the Holy Spirit for an answer. Paul said that too. So take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in all occasions in the Spirit. So what, so what we do? How does that, that work? When we request something, let's go to the Word of God and seek the answer. 99% of the things that you face in the world today 
have not changed since creation? And the answer is through the Word of God. Oh, I don't have patience to read. I don't have patience to look it up. Well, in today's computers, I mean, the internet and technology, you can use it. Get a topic and go ahead and say, what's the answer to this prayer? And get it right in your hands. That's a great thing about technology. Notice what happens to Josephat and all the people pray. They all pray. Now hear the answer. Listen! Listen for the answer. You ask me what you need to do. You ask me what I'm going to do. Now listen to the answer. King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judea and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. He gives the answer. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. Do not be afraid what you're facing. For the battle is not yours, but God's. How many of us fighting every minute, every hour, and trying to do something that we have no power over in our lives? We're fighting, we're fighting, and fighting, God's saying, let me have it. But it doesn't just stand and say the battle, the battle is mine. He gives them instructions for actions they are supposed to take during this crisis. He says, tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the passes, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jerusalem. You will not have to fight this battle. They don't have to fight the battle, but what, have, what do they have to do? They have to go and prepare for the battle. They are to go down. They are to go and the answer is this act. Part of the prayer is when you hear the answer in the action. God's going to tell you to do something. And what he tells you to do is the only thing you need to do in handling the situation. What are some of the actions that you're doing during this? You're helping the elderly. You're watching your family. You're getting close together. The nice thing about social distancing, which is not really true, because last week when we were doing this, we had people from Utah, Florida, California, and North Carolina watching this, bringing it all together. My family, and not necessarily me, because I always lose monotony anyways, but every night they're having a month of monotony getting together. A board game, and we haven't talked to each other that much in years. But the answer is actions. See someone in need, see how you feel. Know somebody that's in need, you know, you need an elderly person that needs medicine, go and give it, you get it for them. What are the other things that you do? Food pantry on the night, 11 people in the food pantry came, and you need food. What we are the action that we're called to. That's the answer because God says, This is bigger than you. I will handle it if you let it do it. If you let me do it. And he heard the answer and he did the action. He says, After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks for the Lord for his love endures forever. You know why he's giving thanks of? You know what he's praying? He's praising because of the fact that God answered prayer. So they go out and do this because God has answered prayer. And finally, the why. This is an old time word, right? We're trying to hear this is yield. Yield. The host of them bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people that you do in Jerusalem fell down and worshiped before the Lord. Everybody did. Everybody cried out and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, what is prophets, the word of God, and you will be successful. Have faith in the idea that God will do this. So this week, as you go through and see just like that, when you pray, you say, What's the praise on you give more? What's the praise? And he says, put the request for the Lord. And when you put the request, take the time of the answers. The 
and it's God who wants you to pray out loud in the Word of God, through the Spirit. Just want to put this little caveat in there. The Holy Spirit will not tell you to do something the Word of God does tell you. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the one who wrote the Word of God. So keep, keep that in mind, but you can find the Holy Spirit. And the last one, you know, how do I deal? I knew it's a great obedience to what? The answer. Here's the biggest one. I knew the will of God. Jesus asked for this cup to be passed from him. He went back and prayed three times. First time he asked for passed. The next two times he asked, he needed the strength to see it through. Remember, when he yielded to God's will, and God's will was that he goes to the cross. Jesus knew that. In that time of Christ, Jesus still went to the cross. We're going to take the meaning of the Son. Remember the praise, remember the answer to prayer, remember the request, and this is reminding us to heal this week to the power of God. Listen to these words. Father, who just love you so much. Bless this bread, bless this cup, bless those that take this one. Just in communion of yielding to your will, of praising you, Jesus, for dying for us in resurrection. Praising you, Holy Spirit, for filling us and the mighty God. Praising you the answers that you give us. Let us seek the answers and the actions that we can do, Father. Turn the rest of them over to you in power, waiting for your instructions. Let us yield the obedience. Let us hope to take this help to this bread.
their North Town church page, Facebook page has announcements. Our website has the announcements going on. And those members of the North Town Church family, especially prayer requests, I want to mention that those that is a private site for members only to share our personal prayer requests, no one else I can see that. But at the same time, if you want to email me at alex at northtownchurch.org for prayer requests and confidential prayer requests, that's also possible. And again, thank you for worshiping with us today and have a wonderful prayer crisis like this, the free of crisis. Put it the Lord, do what you do. Thanks for worshiping with us. Let's talk about prayer. Father, we know the battle belongs to you because we can do nothing about it. But what we can do is show us in answer prayer the actions of loving one another and loving our neighbor and just encouraging one another through technology that you give us. Text someone, email someone, actually use the phone for a phone and you call someone, stay in touch with one another. And just not family members and just not regular church members, but people all over the United States, all over the world. Because we know this is a world crisis, Father, but we know you are in control of all of it. We praise you. We uplift everyone that's hearing us today, who's seen us today, who's participating with us today, who's communing with us today, Father, and hear the prayers of the special blessings of people who are hurting, people who are in crisis, people who have health issues, who are you know, leaders, and those who respond, respond. In Jesus' name, in the whole time, it's in Amen. Thank you. Everybody sing 